Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of Answers Workbench Tutorials. In this session, we are going to analyze a helical coil compression spring for modal analysis and then we will see the harmonic response of that spring. Now, we are very much aware that modal analysis is supposed to be done to calculate the natural frequency of the body. Every body in this universe is going to have some amount of natural frequency by which it can vibrate when it is tapped. For example, if you take a chair in your house, that chair is made up of a material. It has various properties. For example, it has density, it will have a particular Poisson's ratio, Young's modulus. Similarly, it will also have something which is called as modal frequency, which means it is the natural frequency of the body. For example, you just hit the chair. You would see that there is some vibration in the chair. Certain times the natural frequency is very less, hence we cannot feel it. If it is little more, you can obviously feel. For example, you have a table. Just see the table. If there is a certain vibration around which passes on to the table, you can see that the table will move with a small frequency. That is the natural frequency of the body. Now, suppose if you give a force on the table and it matches with the natural frequency. When you hit something, obviously there is a frequency of the hit that you do on the body and the body itself has a natural frequency. So when these two match, it leads to a superposition of mode and hence there is a amplitude which is larger than the natural frequency and hence you will see a lot of vibration in the body. That is nothing but harmonic response analysis. When you have say a sinusoidal type of input into the body and the body starts vibrating, you see a higher amplitude of motion of the body. For example, if you have a building and there is some source of excitation at the bottom, for example, there is a music system playing, you will see that there is a vibration which is being passed onto the building structure and it passes around the entire building and the building starts shaking. So what you see is a harmonic response, that is a forced excitation of the body. But in general, without the use of a loudspeaker, also the building can have certain vibration of its own because it is made up of different materials. Like it could be made of tar steel, it is made of cement, it, there are some gravels in it. So there will be a natural vibration also of the body, which can happen because of movement of people in the building. So this is the basic concept of modal analysis, wherein you tap the natural frequency of the body and harmonic response that we are using to analyze today is nothing but the result of a forced excitation of the body. Every body has a dynamic response. The only thing is it needs to be subjected to a dynamic loading. So today we are going to apply a dynamic load on the spring and we are going to see how it is going to react. So we are going to use multiphysics here. We will start with modal analysis and then we are going to go to harmonic response which you can see here in these modules. So let's start by double clicking on modal. I'll first go to engineering data. The spring can be made up of different material like low carbon steel. It can be made of stainless steel, copper alloys. So we are making use of copper alloy today because that's the general material available in ANSYS. I'll choose copper alloy. I'll go back to project and update project. Next, I'll go to geometry, right click, new design modular geometry. Next, I'll go to units, millimeter. I'll choose XY plane, look at. I'll go to sketching and I'll first draw a straight line. I'll give it dimension. Say it is 50 mm. I'll go back to modeling and click on new sketch. I'll go to new sketch that I have made and I will draw a circle here. I'll give it dimension. Say it is 
See this distance is 12 and the diameter is 4. I will go for sweep option. Profile is the circle and path is this line. Apply. I will change twist specification to turns and I will change the number of turns to 8. Generate. This is a simple geometry that is created of a spring. Next, I'll go to model and double click on it. I'll first go to geometry, solid. I'll change the material to copper alloy. Then I'll go to mesh, right click, insert, method. I'll choose the entire spring, apply. I'll change method to tetrahedrons, update. You can see here, tetrahedrons is the shape of the mesh that I have given. Now I'll go to mesh again and insert sizing. I have chosen the entire spring. I'll change the element size to 2.5. Update. Next, I'll go to model, and here I'm going to insert a boundary condition that is fixed support. The lowermost portion of the spring I'll apply as fixed. Then I'll go to solution and solve. You can see here by default six modes have been created. I will right click and select all the modes created. Again right click and create mode shape results. You can see here all the deformations have been created. These are all the natural frequencies of the body. I will go to solution and solve again. You can see here these are the mode numbers and this is the frequency, natural frequency of the body. The first natural frequency is 55.83 hertz. You can animate and check the motion of the spring. This is the natural frequency of the body, which means I have applied no load. I have just fixed one end of the spring. Next, I can see the second deformation. The frequency is 55.95 hertz. And this is the direction of deformation of the spring. Again, you can see for the third one, the frequency is 109.07 Hz. I'll check for the fourth deformation. The frequency is 124.5 Hz. For the fifth one, the frequency is 230.9 Hz. And for the sixth one, the frequency is 234.89 Hz. So these are by default six modes created by ANSYS. If you wish, you can change the number of modes that you want to see. Here you can see when you go to analysis settings, the maximum number of modes is six. If you wish, you can change this. I'm leaving it to six itself. So this is the modal analysis that we have completed. Now we want to see that if I apply a load on this spring, what would be the harmonic response of this spring? So we will go to harmonic response and we will drag it over the solution. So the entire results of modal analysis is now shifted to harmonic response. We will go to setup and double click on it. You can see these are the results of modal analysis that has been incorporated in the harmonic response. This is called as multiphysics, which is used in ANSYS. That is, you can use more than one module. And you are going to solve by one module, whatever results you get, you can shift it to the next module that you are using for analysis. So now I will go to analysis settings. You can see here it is asking for minimum range and maximum range. Now for giving these two values, what we are supposed to do is, I will go to total deformation and I can see here the frequency range. The first frequency is 55 hertz. 
which means when I have to give the minimum range over here, it has to be less than 55. So I'll leave it to 0. It doesn't matter. You can choose 40, 45, something like that also. It's okay. Anything between 0 and 54 is acceptable. So it is not asking me for the value also if you check. Only this portion of maximum range is highlighted, which means I need to give this value. So for that, we will go to total deformation 6. Value over here is 234. So I should be giving a value here, which is more than 234. So let me choose the value is 250. You can choose any other value. I am choosing between 0 to 250. Now it is asking for solution intervals. I have chosen 10. You can choose more. The more number of intervals you choose, the more discrete your frequency response graph is going to be. So let me choose 50. You can see here the solution method is mode superposition. There are two methods. One is called as full harmonics method and one is called as mode superposition method. Both the analysis is a linear type of analysis. There is no nonlinearity considered here. In mode superposition, what you do is there is a natural frequency of the body and obviously a force is applied wherein when the frequency of forced vibration matches the frequency of natural frequency of the body, what happens is there is a resonance. So that technique is used which is called as mode superposition. So we have chosen the minimum and maximum range. We have given a solution interval. I will now go to analysis settings itself and insert a force which is required so that it will be a part of harmonic response or dynamic response of a system. I'll choose this portion and apply. I'll change vector to component. I can see the direction is y. So along the y axis, let me apply a force of minus 1000 Newton. Now I'll go to solution and insert frequency response deformation. Generally, when you apply a load or a pressure on the body, what you want to see is the frequency response of the deformation. This is the general result that is taken out. So we have also chosen the same. We are going to choose the entire geometry over here. Apply. Now I want to see the orientation along the y-axis because I have applied the load in that direction. So I want to see the frequency response in that direction. You can see here minimum and maximum range is already chosen. So now I'll go to solution and solve. This is the frequency response plot for this type of a spring analysis. You can see here, these are the frequencies at the various points that we have chosen. We have chosen 50 intervals between 0 and 250 range. So you will have 50 points over here. You can see the peak over here. This is the point where you see the peak that is the point where the resonance of the body is going to happen and the body will start vibrating with the maximum frequency and this is at a particular value you can see from this table the maximum value is somewhere 2506 so somewhere 2506 if i check here it is at 110 hertz what i'll do is i'll go to frequency response and click on create contour result you can see the directional deformation here, the frequency is 110 hertz, the point where you have your maximum vibration. So, I'll go to solution and solve. You can see this at 110 hertz. This is the way your spring is going to vibrate and this is the maximum vibration frequency that the body is going to undergo. That is because at this point, your body is undergoing resonance wherein the forced vibrations have caused the body to vibrate with a maximum amplitude you can see that over here the amplitude is maximum 2506 mm and at this same point you can see here there is a phase angle or a phase shift that you see now phase shift is when you are applying a load on the body Considering that the body can vibrate with the natural frequency, it will continue to vibrate forever. There is something which is called as damping coefficient or damping ratio. This value is added so that your body has a finite number of cycles. Otherwise, it will keep on vibrating infinitely with a particular amplitude. 
which will obviously lead to fatigue and damage of the body so it has to come down to rest you can go to frequency response check the result you will see here maximum amplitude is 2506.6 mm frequency is 110 hertz at this point the phase angle is 0 degree initially the phase angle was 180 so there is a phase shift or rather there is a lag between the natural and the applied force if there is no lag over a period of time the body will not come to halt it will continuously keep on vibrating now you have seen the directional deformation we will also insert something which is called as equivalent stress here you should add the frequency the frequency at which you were seeing the maximum amplitude was 110 so we need to know the equivalent stress which is generated because of this maximum amplitude so i'll go to solution and solve you can check out this equivalent stress on the body and this zone where you can see the red color it is the point where you have the maximum stress generated you can see here this is the amount of stress generated 1.68 Into ten raised to five mega pascal, which is very high, and that is at this zone where you can see the red color. So, by clicking on this equivalent stress and entering the frequency at which you have seen the maximum amplitude, you can find out the point where there is maximum stress generated, and you can take corrective actions if required, because that is the point where your spring is bound to fail. so at that point you can either add more material or you can change the material such that the stress generated is less by the body because of the material being more better so that's how you interpret the results of this frequency response and harmonic response of the body is analyzed i hope you have understood this analysis if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.